Welcome to Unit 2. In this unit, you'll learn what demography is, how geographers study population, and how it affects you. We will analyze the distribution of human population at different scales, from global to local. We will look at trends in population growth and decline over time, and space, based on trends in fertility, mortality, and migration. We will study how access to education and healthcare slows fertility rates in different parts of the world and its effects on overall global population. In our study of migration, we will look at major historical migrations of our world and current migration debates, including barriers to movement, push and pull factors like environmental disasters and war, refugee status, and the economic, social, and political consequences of movement in our time. We have with us today Dr. David Walalu, an international security lecturer, regular contributor to Huffington Post, and author of The Ambiguous Foreign Policy of the United States Towards the Muslim World, More Than a Handshake, and forthcoming book, Volatile State, Iran in the Nuclear Age. Welcome, Dr. Walalu. Thank you for having me. Can you talk about some of the major challenges in immigration today? Well, international migration is, is, is a hot topic. As a matter of fact, it became a political one for many countries. And you don't have to look far to see what's taking place in Europe, for example, or even in our borders. So, but let's start at, at least with defining what are the reasons for why people move out of their country to another one. There are, of course, economic reasons. Uh, most of the refugees and immigrants want to sort of improve their living conditions for themselves, for their families. Uh, also, there are political reasons as to the climate, how what's taking place in countries. For example, now what's taking place in Syria, you got about 2 million refugees with no places to go. Europe can only take so much, or so many for that matter. You get uh, uh, kids, they are not going to school because there is no infrastructure for that. Also, you look at, for example, in Africa, migrants cross the Mediterranean, so many died. When, when crossing, everybody is kind of looking for ways to improve themselves and they want to get out of their environments for a better life. The other one has to do with the monetary aspects of it. Migrants sometimes go through uh, hurdles for them to be able to reach their destinations. And that leads to one major question now that the UN is involved in has to do with human trafficking. I'm sure you've heard the increased numbers of human trafficking organizations that are involved in this. So, and that goes not only in, in borders here in Texas, uh, between the Mexico and Texas, and also in Europe, in the Mediterranean, Africa, and even in Asia as well. Mm. I know that human trafficking is a, a very important topic that we explore a little bit in this unit. Um, another thing that we really need to pay attention to, especially in today's current events, is the refugee topics. Can you talk a little bit about why the debate over what the international community should do about refugees, why it's so heated, why there are so many different perspectives? That, that's a great question uh, because there is no answer to it yet. And, and, and policymakers, not only in the U.S., in other countries, are struggling to find ways of even addressing the issue. But one thing we have to keep in mind, it's sometimes uh, in politics, you can always turn an issue into a political matter. That has to do with votes, it has to do with other issues. But sometimes we forget the human side of, of whatever we're dealing with, in case of the refugees. Best example is Syria right now. No. I'm not suggesting or saying that, oh, we're gonna accept all the refugees because there's a risks involved in that, security risks. I have to understand who's coming to my country. But also I have to understand that immigration is part of, it's, that's the result of globalization. The borders now are almost like gone in certain parts, especially in Europe. You, know, you take the example of uh, 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 Germany, for example, where the population of Germany is aging. So the German government is thinking the next 25, 30 years, how are they going to fund those retirees? So accepting refugees, especially the younger ones from Syria, at age of four or five, maybe that's a smart idea to build them up, 
to acquire the language, to acquire the cultural understanding, the traditions, and so forth. Then they assimilate into society. By the time they age 18, 20, which is part of where they're going to start their productive years, they'll contribute to society. Um, the students who are taking this course, they're going to be learning about demography. So mm -hmm. as a, a professor, what is something that you think is most important for students to take away from this course in relation to their understanding of demography? Well, again, that's another great question for that. Why? Because the students, within the next five or ten years, they're going to be in a professional setting. They're going to be contributing to not only their own well-being, but the, uh, the, the well-being of the community and the countries, wherever they might be. So they have to have an understanding of how other people from other cultures think. Take, for example, if you and I, we go to China, for example, to do business, we're going to have to have an understanding of how the Chinese think. Same thing for the students. They have to understand that globalization has opened up the path for movements of people. You're going to interact one way or the other because the world, it's not us here, them over there. Not anymore. Not anymore. You see, for example, on Facebook, you put something, within a minute, it's around the world. Mm -hmm. Twitter, within a minute, it's around the world. Same thing with understanding demographics. People move around. Also, because we're growing as a population around the world, that's 7 billion, you will expect movements from one country to the next. The question has always been is for the students to understand what their role is going to be, how they're going to impact that issue of demographic movement, the population movements around the world. And they can play a positive role into impacting that direction by acquiring the necessary information, which will be basically based on understanding the impact of immigration on a global level. So I, I think that those are some of the things that we may take for granted in a developed country and um, be aware of how as demographic momentum moves through the, and we look at population pyramids, as the younger people get older, um, they're in that working cohort and they support the very young and the very old yeah. and how the, it's different in different countries mm -hmm. and cultures. That's correct. Uh, I look at, uh, for example, Germany, Japan, Italy, and France, and Australia for that matter even Canada to a degree, their, their population is aging. Mm -hmm. We don't have that issue here in the United States because we are a land of immigrants. Mm -hmm. And also because we have a healthy immigration here. Yes, we have our own struggles with the illegals and so forth. And, and that stuff can be resolved if there is a will to do that. But at least from an economic perspective, we don't foresee problems like what Japan does what Germany does, what Italy does, and France, and Australia, and even Canada. Recently, Canada now is opening up their immigration process unbelievably. Mm -hmm. I never thought Canada would do that. Why? Because they are realizing that at some point in the next 15 years, if they don't build that segment of society that will pay taxes, that will provide funding for the retired, they're going to run into some serious financial problems. So at least for us in the United States, we don't have that issue. And this is one thing students need to learn that the importance of demography or the, or the migration for that matter is in impact on domestic, domestic policies for countries, whatever that country might be. Thank you so much. My and, pleasure. <laughs> and we'll see Dr. Walalu later in unit four. Thank you students and enjoy population and migration.